Welcome back to Therapist After Hours. My name is Alexandra Sinclair and here with me is Zach Butterfield. We are both therapists and uh, we thought it would be a good idea for us to have our after hours moment when we get to process some aspects of our wonderful job. And today we're a little bit nervous. I mean, I am more than a little bit <laughs> uh, because we decided to talk um, about the uh, the hmm, aspect in therapy when male therapist sees female clients and female therapist sees male clients. Hey, how that plays into the process and the relationship. <laughs> Where do we start, huh? <laughs> so I mean, we do. Uh, I do want to say. I don't remember now. Uh, I did want to mention that as hard as it was in the past when we were recording this, our priority is always to protect the privacy of uh, our clients and make sure that if they ever hear it, they don't feel like they've been talked about because that's definitely would not be good. And um, and I feel like today it might might be extra difficult. So I don't know. So you may see us sort of like kind of beat around the bush <laughs> or kind of talk in circles, not finishing sentences, because there's that example we have in, he in our heads and we don't want to like use it. Right. But we'll try our best. That's all we can do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe we start with like, why is it um, so like, awkward to like <laughs> talk about this <laughs> like why it's so uh, difficult like of a subject to broach and that's because like like there there seems to be an added layer of dynamics with like like clients that are opposite sex mm -hmm. um just that like like there are a couple of times where like i've like heard from girls like oh that's because you're a guy and you think that way Type stuff like mm -hmm. that, and it's like, no, you're you're missing my point. Like, mm -hmm. like it's still relevant whether I'm a guy or not. Yeah, kind of thing. So like it, there's like just like other layers like that that make it a little bit more the, complex. Or what are what are you thinking? Yeah, there is. Uh, when I'm thinking about that question, it was like, why is it so so difficult, right? To uh -huh. kind of talk about it. Uh, and that's probably one of the, it's just so many, so many things playing into that. And I think it might be difficult for us because this is where we take a look like, oh, okay, what is it about my gender, me being a woman that makes a difference to my client, you right. know? Right. And, and I do think like, I'm, you know, I'm betting you, you do that a lot. I, there are moments when I literally, okay, would he, would he struggle like this with that if I would be a guy, you know? Right. That type of like, what? Yeah, like, because we do play a role, not to sort of, okay, I'm jumping all over a little no, bit good, here, but we'll get to, to, st to stuff, right? Yeah, there's always also thinking today, like we do, uh, sometimes it's very obvious, sometimes it's not obvious, but we sort of, we take on a role of a mom, dad, husband, wife, like the, all that. <laughs> that's yep. like, yes. <laughs> yes. I hope your head will not fall off. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, right? Where the, those issues that came up with other relationships will come in here, right? So obviously, if I see a female client, I her relationship with mom can be less complicated, you know, like, right. or I, she can see me as sister or as a friend, like that type, right? When, when there's a male, cli male client, I'm either going to be mom, wife, ex-girlfriend, or, you know, yep. yeah, I don't know what else, really, right? Well, sister. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is like important <clears throat> to like, I know like probably like in one of the first episodes we did, we talked about like transfers and counter transfers. Mm -hmm. Um, that I didn't believe it and found out that's totally <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then you saw some girls. Yeah, so then I saw teenage <laughs> girls and, and young adult girls. And I was like, okay, this is definitely a thing. Mm -hmm. But like, it's like, it seems less weird to me now that like I've been a counselor for a long time than like it felt at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but I, that's why I feel like it's important to just like talk through that again of why it's like less weird is like, is when you are in like a 
your vulnerable spot, which you are in in counseling. It really activates like those base vulnerable things for you, for like the Mm -hmm. client and like sometimes like it does it for us as well. Mm -hmm. And so, and so you're saying like, you know, we play the role of mom or dad and stuff like that. Like depending on our age, depending on how we're interacting with them, what we're saying and stuff like that, we do activate that type of stuff. Like it's very common, at least for me to hear, oh my gosh, you remind me of my friend, my brother. You remind me of this like teacher I do. Like, like, Mm -hmm. like it's, it's very, it's very activating on those, those core, like relationships and memories of the client and yeah. so it's very easy for them to put that on us or see us as that role mm-hmm. and so like you're saying that's very complicated if they have like real significant struggles with uh like the opposite sex parent or yeah. like they just got out of a terrible relationship or something like that mm-hmm. and and some of those things come up for us. Like, what if I happen to say something that, like, their ex-boyfriend just said? And they're, and, oh, yeah. like, not that, not that, like, their ex-boyfriend said that in, like, a great way or handled it appropriately or whatever. But that was part of the thing that was activating them. So if I happen to say something that reminds them of that or whatever, yeah. it could be very activating. So I think, I think that happens more with opposite sex clients than same sex clients. I would agree. And so I think that's why it's a little dicey to talk about this because like mm-hmm. we're we the just the nature of the counseling relationship can push on those core buttons and a lot of them can be with like opposite sex parent mm-hmm. or with like dating relationships and stuff like that. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes it's right, pushing that button. A lot of the times I can see the comparison in a client's head. Like, oh, like, oh, my wife, oh, if my wife would say, you know, sort of yep. that's comparing kind of, oh, that's different that, you know, because yeah. gender is one of the first things we see about the person, right? Absolutely. Like we walk in and sort of, that's why it's difficult when, you know, when you're, Anyway, uh, because we see a person and that's one of the first things we notice. And then there's already sort of like we have set approach, yeah. right? With yeah. with men, I interact this way and with women, I interact that way. And right. that's on the table with women and that's yeah. on the table with men, sort of, you know. Yeah. So yeah. The, the other aspect of that, too, is like if if like if you're calling like an agency or whatever to get set up with a counselor oh yeah one of the first things they ask if you have preference is you prefer a male counselor or a female counselor mm-hmm. um or if you don't have any preference like i feel like that's one of the main questions and then yeah. it's um like religious preference like same religious preference doesn't matter mm-hmm. to you like i feel like those are like the main questions mm-hmm. you can ask about like if you're going to line up with a counselor. So that's a very good point. Yeah. I so think that's usually they ask, right? They the usually client, ask like, whatever. Mm-hmm. like probably those two are probably the main ones they ask. And then they ask about, you know, like what your problem is and then kind of match you in there. So it's uh-huh. kind of like as therapists, we're almost identified by our gender too. Like, can you, totally. would you feel comfortable working on this with a guy, with a mm-hmm. girl or, or neither? Yeah. And for a client, it's okay, just, you know, just FYI, for a client, it's okay to not have a preference, to not even right. think about it, right. not worry about it. Some will. Um, I know that, you know, some female clients will want to talk to a woman because there are some ways, some, you know, some things that yeah. a man will, um, not teen, I mean, t- teenagers, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, that it's going to be hard for a male therapist to relate to. Not that they cannot do that, they can. Right. But some, you know, so, so you can, you may have a preference or you may not. That's not, you yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. That's and not so, yeah, it doesn't. You don't have to worry about it. If you're not thinking about it, don't think and, about it. <laughs> yeah. Great point. <laughs> great point. Yeah. Um, I think the other layer that will probably be uncomfortable for us to talk about, <laughs> so we'll venture into it. this lightly, <laughs> is, um, like, you see a lot of guys with, like, sexual addiction problems. Mm-hmm. There's been times I've seen girls actually with, like, pornography problems or sexual abuse. Um, um, and that's not necessarily always, like, sexual abuse from, like, a guy to a girl, but sometimes girls to a girl. And so, in that case, mm-hmm. they usually feel much more comfortable. But oh, yeah. if it's, like, guy-girl, that's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Or um, recently, like, I've had, like, this like this pocket of um, married females with like, Mm -hmm. maybe like, um, 
like sexual intimacy problems and like like that actually has been surprisingly comfortable for me to like talk about <laughs> which is odd um because i'm not married and, and you're not a female and i'm not a female <laughs> but like um getting to like that emotional layer and stuff like that um like I feel like there's mm-hmm. usually like an emotional component to that, and so. Yeah, but I can see how things, how a uh, how a married w- woman would, you know, would want to talk to you about you know like that yeah. stuff because it's almost like you get she gets to hear from men's perspective. Yeah. Too right, yeah. like what can she expect, what she cannot expect for sure, and that might be helpful. That's the same right. Well, with male clients, not just the pornography addiction, but any. Yeah. Um, that or any other like struggles in their relationships like I can tell them like oh okay if your wife does not want to be intimate with you that really may not be about you like right. really not right. even close you know <laughs> right. so so they get to hear that from someone else other than like tired wife t- brushing them off you right. know so right. um, so yeah I guess okay we have some benefits <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> to well, that, right? well, what is it like with you to talk about guys with like pornography addiction or sex addiction? And hey, stuff like that? so right. So I sometimes think about it. Obviously, I don't have a because I'm I don't get to be a male therapist sometimes, right, so right. I don't get that uh, comparison. Okay, I will tell you something little that I believe helps in my case uh-huh. individually. Accent. Yeah, <laughs> I think the fact that I don't sound like their mom yeah. <laughs> or wife or, you know, yeah. I think that actually helps. It's sort helps of like, I'm like it. yeah, like they're sort of like from a whole different pocket of yeah. humans, you know, so yeah. so I at least I like to think that uh, yeah. that it kind of makes makes them a little bit more comfortable. I'm sort of like more removed from their life, right. from the girls they interact with. Right. This makes sense, right? Yep. Like, I'll stick with yep. that. Okay. Yep. So, uh, so I think, uh, hmm, it's, I, I, I guess I've done it enough that it's not like uncomfortable for me to have to say masturbation, pornography, and you yeah. know, all that yeah. the li- language, and that's part of it, right? For sure. I do need to remember that they may be uncomfortable hearing that from me, you know, or me yeah. asking a question. So, so it really like it really varies um from client to client. Sometimes I just don't say those words for a few sessions. Right. Sometimes we don't even get to it and let them sort of, you know, they use like a oh, you know thing or you know, like the substitute, whatever, and I'll stick with it. Right. For a while. And then when relationship is really established and they know that also um and I don't know if that's just Utah, probably not. Um but when client comes in and struggle with pornography, he already like told mom or wife or something, right? Yep. Chances are they have been judged. They, you know, the yep. wife felt hurt and mom freaked out. And the, that for initial, them initially saying something and the f- usually first reaction from a female was like, what? That's disgusting. How can you know, or something, some variation of that. So, um, so when they do get to come in and sometimes they already know that I know why they're here, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. So, uh, and I don't know if that's better or not, to be honest. Uh, I like when they have the whole control of when to tell me what, you know? And so, and I kind of, you know, and they get to tell me and I just like kind of sit there and just sort of, you know, all right, you know, that's, that helps them, I think, in the long run. It might be more difficult because it may may have been more easier for for them to tell a guy. But now they see that not all the girls in the world will just be mortified by that. Right. You know. So right. then, when they, whatever they kind of will work through what this means, da da da. Am I like, am I too much? Am, is, is this normal? They get to hear that from a woman. Like, okay, is that disgusting? Am I like too? Am I am I per- a pervert? And mm-hmm. then I get to tell them usually ninety nine percent. That no, no, it's like you know, right? If everyone is a consulting adult, and you know, right, right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's answer. That was the easy part of this, you know. Yeah. So, uh, well, the the for a male therapist who yeah. also sees a lot of like sex addiction and per and pornography addiction, like. 
I think it's really valuable for them to like talk about that with a female therapist, although mm-hmm. a ton of them are very uncomfortable doing so. Yeah. Um, because like, like one, I feel like guys aren't socialized enough to be able to like discuss things very well, mm-hmm. let alone things that like are very shameful or yeah. like just that personal. aren't just talked about really personal stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah. And I do like to, I say it like many times. Uh, because again, in Utah, so I feel like it gets underestimated with you know with the church getting involved and yep. the questions and all. Yep. Like I cannot, I did not grow up grow up in an LDS church, and I cannot imagine an adult ever asking me if I masturbate. Right. Are you kidding me? Right. Like no, right. oh gosh, I would be mortified. Right. <laughs> and that happens to teenage boys here, yep. right? Maybe yep. girls too, I guess, yep. right? Yes. And yep. um, so maybe uh, less girls, but. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and that changes now, I hear. I, yeah. yeah. There is like a, yes. a parent needs to be uh-huh. present or something like that, right? Yep. Um, so I'm glad. So so I make a uh, giant point of that whenever possible that, wow, like, you know, I know this is personal. You don't have to tell me. And then if they do, like, I really appreciate you sharing that, right. you know, you just met right. me. Da, da, da. Like, I make a huge deal of how... Um, yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. You know how how personal it is, and and sometimes I do put in like, and you know, I'm a girl, you know, right. and, and sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, there's no need to apologize. Like, sure, that might be then more uncomfortable for them to say that to you mm-hmm. than maybe to me and stuff like that. But like, like they still usually feel some element of shame when talking about me. Like, they still avoid the words. I still hear a lot of time like. I messed up. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I need to know what that means. Like, we need to speak clearly. Yeah, did like, you, like, spill milk? Or did you... <laughs> like, shame is part of the cycle that leads you yeah. doing this again. So, like, let's not, like, let's say what we mm-hmm. mean kind of thing. And so maybe that's a little bit easier for them to get used to with me than you. Yeah. But I feel like that's, I feel like that's really can be crucial to their development to, like, work through that mm-hmm. with, like, a female therapist. Because you're right, like, there's so many times, and I'm, like, so I'm not going to try to be critical of women's reactions to this because women can react how they how they need to. No, to but it is different, right? Like, like it's different when a husband tells yeah. a wife, right? And yeah. this is like the first time she ever like is the, is this a betrayal? Like, has, right. Is this cheating? Like right. she doesn't know yet, right? It, it's it's such an emotional reaction for moms and wives. Oh yeah, like because they they usually quickly go to their worth, their worth as a mom, their worth as a oh, wife, yes. their yeah. body image. And like, 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 sure, like, like, that's definitely a thing. But like, that can be very, very damaging to mm-hmm. guys. Like, if they're like, oh, this is like, wow, that's a reaction. It can also be helpful to some extent. Um, so they can see like, oh, like women are more like rounded than just like body parts and objects and stuff like that. <laughs> but like, I, I do find that like, like women's emotional reactions, which it's fine. They can have the mm-hmm. emotional reactions they want to are very intense when it yes. comes, when it comes to that stuff. And so to be able to talk through that with a woman can be like really healing. I hope I think. so. I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I've been trying to think about uh no, I, I, it's not a real regenerate like uh, clients that have the pornography, pornography addiction, but I would not that I don't know. My experience does not confirm, but overall uh, men are less accustomed, right? To talk right. about talking about feelings. And I say it all the time, like, don't worry about it. That's your fault. You know, like right. I was in preschool talking like, oh, this is uh, I feel that and I uh-huh. you were not encouraged right. to do that. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, so that's like sort of puts another layer where they kind of feel not, you know, as yeah. confident. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to to kind of change this a little bit, like yeah. me working with women, I feel like this. That's... I feel like a similar feeling comes up if we're talking about sexual abuse, and it was with a guy. Mm-hmm. Like, um, first of all, like like you said, like like I'm very honored if they decide to bring that up and I tell them like, wow, like that's so good and stuff like that. I think similarly, it could be very healing for girls to talk about that experience with the guy if it was a guy that yeah. abused them just because like it kind of has a similar result. Like it, it's processing it through. They sometimes then that distorts their relationships with other guys 
um, like they they kind of expect to be treated poorly by guys. Mm-hmm. So to be able to like feel validated and walk through a, that with a guy like I have no Absolutely. expectations of them at all. Right. Like that that obviously happens naturally in dating relationships and stuff like that. And so mm-hmm. I think like some of that stuff is obviously very uncomfortable for them. Um, but some of that some of that can also then be the very healing aspect of it as well. Um, yeah, and this is what I kind of like whenever we say yeah. that relationship is the therapy. That is so important. Like here, yeah. right? Sometimes a teenage girl comes to you, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, but you might be the first male <laughs> ever, you know, right. that treat her with respect and right. like want to, he, interested in what she has to say, right. or not not look at her as an object, you yep. know. And this is kind of like getting those. Oh, oh, okay. So that's I can do this with a man. With right. I can do this with a guy. Right. Which is very valuable, but it brings up. Yeah. <laughs> brings up I'm how betting being that teenage, teenage girls have crashes on you all the time. Probably. Right? Uh, They're definitely. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the assumption mm. that I guess a male therapist, you have to keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That and I do. Later, yes. I do. And so um, I'm extremely strict with boundaries. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, it's obviously different because obviously like I'm like, I'm thinking through helping them or I'm thinking like I'm going through analyzing and they're feeling vulnerable and exposed. And then like, they're experiencing like, oh, I'm listened to, I'm understood. And so that like releases oxytocin in their brain, which like is a connecting hormone, right? Mm -hmm. Where oxytocin probably isn't rarely ever being released in my brain during any counseling session okay. and so like it's very it's like it's a very different relationship from a client to a therapist yeah. perspective than a therapist to a client mm-hmm. and like not to dismiss how much i care about my clients but it's like i'm their one person that they're trusting to sort through all these things but they're not my one person that i'm listening <laughs> yeah. to all those things and uh-huh. you're gonna be listening to another yeah, person i'm gonna an be hour listening to now. another mm-hmm. person an hour from now and so they're going to have a much greater emotional experience than I'll ever have in yeah. in any session. And so, um, so like you said, like sometimes then they think that like, especially like in abuse cases, like they think that, oh, if I feel this certain way with somebody, that usually means that there's like a sexual component, right? Yeah. And that, like and that's something that needs to be tra- changed in their brain that like connection doesn't mean then like you have to have like than like a sexual relationship with somebody and so so that's that's the that's a definitely a case in abuse for sure Uh um but like just in general like i'm sure like it doesn't help that i've i am single and stuff like that and (laughs) and there's sometimes maybe like if they try crossing boundaries not not maliciously or not super inappropriately but like i just mm-hmm. will not have contact with them outside of counseling i won't have contact with them even when we're done counseling and uh-huh. stuff like that and even though the ethics rule is like like for counselors is like five, five years, years I think. Mm-hmm. you could then have a relationship with someone their family or or them but like yeah it's for like me it's never <laughs> for me it's for me the rule has always been never and always mm-hmm. will be never <laughs> like yeah like there's just no way yeah um so just to kind of like normalize for like clients if any like clients are listening like oh my goodness i have i totally have a crush on my therapist that's totally normal Mm -hmm. right that's something that can come up and happen and and you don't have to freak out you can talk to your therapist or not about this whatever but it's kind of it's just the connection that does get confused in our brain yeah you know like it does like yeah you you feel close to this person you feel taken care of and right. appreciated and you know you feel important to that person you will have that it's gonna sort of like you know yeah go in there right yeah. somehow so so that's just yeah that's sort of like a sometimes people feel that for the doctor that saved their life right, right. sort of like this yeah th- that's normal don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> it's just, gonna pass that just reminded me of like a huge plot line and lost oh really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is yeah. Forever, so like so it's it it's not like you said it's not unnatural even though it's yeah. weird to talk about. Um, 
we're just not going to have that same experience. And like, but yeah. also we're just straight up not going to do it because that defeats the purpose of the counseling relationship. Definitely. Yes, that would be. This is why we have that very hard rule in our ethical court, uh, code. Don't do it. Right. It's, can be can. Yeah. Do a lot. Right. Lots of damage. If that kind of pure and sacred as we like to call yep. it right and this yep. one-way relationship ends up with that that's super confusing right. and opposite of healing basically for sure you know for sure yeah. yeah and it's it's tricky like if i'm talking about like like particularly sexual abuse like they usually have very poor boundaries in relationships yeah um and so if those feelings are getting activated by me, it's also the place to practice boundaries. boundaries. And that's More usually something that's usually something that's disrupted in abuse anyways across the board is understanding of boundaries, understanding of um, self like self-respect for the survivor of sexual abuse, but then yeah. also like like relationships with other people. And so I kind mm -hmm. of encourage them to even set boundaries with me like I don't want to talk about that today. Or stuff like that mm -hmm. even like even stuff like that is probably one of the most therapeutic things they can do um yeah in a way because like they don't have that and so mm -hmm. like it is it is a relationship to practice those things but like 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 we said like you also have to like learn that like just because those feelings are activated does not mean that's a relationship for you or like a fantasy yeah stuff like that but yeah it's tricky yeah but i like that what you said that it's, it's really uh, a moment for someone who whose sort of like relationship patterns got so messed up right yep um to practice i'm setting boundaries but i'm also respecting boundaries right this person can can say no to me and that doesn't mean that they reject me right 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 and they i can still feel safe within the boundaries of this relationship yeah so yeah totally like yeah that's why we don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there so really the therapy therapeutic relationship does not leave that room does not leave Absolutely. that's why it does not leave you know for sure for sure does not turn into dating basically yeah, yeah. ever right never. and we never, said never. i think we both said that it's sort of uh that's one of sort of like those mindsets we have as we yeah. when we put on the therapist hat i mean i don't know you know i'm trying to think of some hot celebrity men that yeah. would like walk into my <laughs> office if he's a client he's like right. neutral really right, right? in that right. respect i will notice i will know that he's a male obviously i have to keep that in mind right but it does not like i don't know you know it's just sort of like a different category yeah in my brain for, yeah. for sure yeah. right yes yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah another another maybe uh slightly dicey area to go into with this is kind of like the power dynamics mm -hmm. um and like like obviously like as a therapist we usually start out with a disproportionate <laughs> amount of power in the relationship just because yeah. like like they're coming to our office we're yeah. the expert we know everything about their lives they barely know yeah. anything about our lives um but um i find it interesting that well and i'm sure that like you have men like maybe pushing or trying to push you around or tell you like what they want to hear sometimes like that i usually uh -huh. get that from teenage girls <laughs> oh, <yes>. <laughs> <laughs> like uh -huh. teenage girls i can feel it trying... i get that from, from teenage girls well, as I'm well. <laughs> it's, it's probably just the teenage girls too <laughs> but like i like teenage girls first of all like sometimes they're like the most vicious creatures on earth especially <laughs> to each other like it's oh, gosh, unbelievable yes. yeah. what yeah. they do to each other but um sometimes like it's it's very tricky especially like with like a parent dynamic and stuff like that with teenage girls is because mm -hmm. i i need teenage girls to feel listened to and understood so that i can help them but usually i can feel them trying to get me to say something so that they can use as ammunition to people their lives afterwards uh -huh. and so i can like i see myself getting into those traps sometimes i realize it sometimes i don't but then mm -hmm. like that's like that usually comes up parents are like why did you say this or something like that it's mm. like <laughs> like i don't know if i actually said it that way like i doubt mm -hmm. i did because i know myself mm -hmm. um like like for example like a generic example 
it's there's a research study multiple research studies actually that particularly for women when their same sex child gets to the age that they experienced abuse it causes their the parents' brain to reprocess the abuse yes. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of research about that, and so um, I've found that to be very much the case that if I'm working with a teenager, and sure, like the teenager has things they need to work through, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not to the extent that the parent thinks. Then I start thinking along the lines of like what is being activated mm -hmm. in the parent mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Just, yeah. But then also I feel like that can help. Uh, with like compassion for your parent like your parents yeah. are obviously going through something emotional so I do talk about like trauma and be like well it's quite possible your parent had like a traumatic situation your age or there's something mm -hmm. that you're activating to like try to be compassionate but then they use that as ammunition well you're just traumatized oh, and stuff like that. It's, yes. it's like no like like my therapist thinks you're traumatized and, and you're just your a hot mess yeah. and it's your fault <laughs> which is not the intention mm -hmm. i'm coming from at all like yeah. my intention is always healing and stuff yeah. like that and connection and compassion and stuff like that and so if that's yeah. something I bring up, and then particularly I found it with teenage girls, use it as ammunition yeah. in fights with their parents wow. later. Like it's uh it's not it's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay, but like that helps like like you you can't connect with people this way for like yeah. teenage girls. You no, can't but I think for, for some teenage girls for uh, and other humans, I think that might be just part of the process right it's like right. oh and then they have to get like upset and all that oh now now i get it you put that because they do right like right some some of the emotional baggage has been put on the kid and now right. she's gonna lash out in like not very delicate way yeah say, right yeah and and I'll, and hopefully after that she gets to like oh my goodness you know like yep. take a moment to look at the parent's side but yeah okay that's interesting though yeah that's, so that's yeah. where that's where I feel like the power struggles with me and women. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't like once they turn eighteen and they're out of the house, that goes away. I don't know like why. <laughs> it does. Why right? that's it the case? It, it totally change. changes. Yeah. Um. Sometimes, sometimes there is a tendency for women to still do that, but that I, it usually just takes a reminder that like this is us talking. You can't use this as a manipulation tool. Like you have to. Mm -hmm. You can't say like, well, my counselor thinks this, so you should do this. Like. You still have to stand up for yourself, for you. Yeah. Like if you're bringing in the like the expert kind of thing, like to prove your point, that's that's manipulation. Like it's just not okay. Yeah. But like usually they resolve that quicker than teenage girls Definitely. do for whatever reason. Yeah. So do you but, do you think that I uh, I don't know that being a male versus female therapist kind of makes it even more intense that because there is that i mean and you are male right you now and right. typically that's i mean if you're a powerful had, male you know, <laughs> if you've had that experience too then maybe not a hundred percent but i feel like 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 at my like me my core personality like i'm a uh -huh. nice guy like i want people to feel understood i'm compassionate mm -hmm. stuff like that I feel like maybe that aspect of me being a guy gets taken advantage of by some of these girls mm -hmm. that are more engaging in like manipulative gaming kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. um, just like the social maneuvering, the social tactics, like maybe I fall or maybe that more I'm often. more used to that <laughs> as a girl, yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe I'm serious because yeah. I don't have sisters. Either. That's right. I yeah. don't have sisters. My mom doesn't really play those games. My mom's yeah. very direct. She's not like a passive okay. aggressive beat around the bush uh -huh. um, and stuff like that. And my I did have friends that were girls growing up, but none of those engage in those games with me. Like mm -hmm. I also like Games, you wouldn't play like you I wouldn't, wouldn't play. participate. I wouldn't so, play yeah. like, like, like looking at my life. My like, I my brothers were pretty straightforward, but then also boys like you know you just like mm -hmm. fight it out and you're fine <laughs> kind of thing. Where yeah. girls, there's all the revenge and and stuff yeah. like that like that kind of plays that out. That, uh, you know. So and like because my mom is that way. Um, I feel like my life has been expected that people are going to be straightforward. So like if mm. girls 
so this is like Zach, not the counselor. That it obviously <laughs> relates to Zach, the counselor. Zach, not the counselor. If I'm feeling games, you're usually you're not right. going to be a part of my life. Yeah. Um. And so my friends that were girls through high school and stuff like that didn't play very many games at all, or mm -hmm. at least they weren't playing it with me, or mm -hmm. like they were so good at them, I didn't realize <laughs> that it was going on. Um. And so I'm grateful for that. Like I'm grateful for for my friends like that. But so mm -hmm. like I. Zach, Zach, the person has very, very little tolerance for that. And so then in the counselor mode, maybe I'm not always expecting that because I'm expecting people to be straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, but like now I've learned to, to watch for it. But like it, mm -hmm. it still comes up. It still comes up. It and, does. And yeah. it's like, no, you can't interact with people this way. They don't like it. Mm hmm. But you get to yeah. call out the client. On I get to call out the client, which I don't necessarily get to do in life. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, you don't have to deal with that mm. in, in life, right? Right. Yeah, but it might be kind of, yeah, I don't know. But it's a good experience either way. I also want uh, either way for the client, you know, to to be, if they try it, if they did that with you, they did that with others, right? Absolutely. I sort of, I always keep that in mind. If there are like teenagers and parents are not co-parenting very well, yeah. So they're used to, oh, mom said I can do that. And that's, you know, yeah. so I'm going to be in this as well. Right. right. Like, oh, Alex right. said this. Da, 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 right. So we're like, kind of like, I don't know, assuming this sort of playing. Right. Adults, basically. Right. Uh, right. That's going to uh, can happen. But I also wanted <laughs> to say uh, <laughs> when you do, when you are, when you do counseling with teenagers or kids, sometimes we and sometimes I say it to the parents, like, Sometimes I will make a parent a bad guy, like, you know, yeah. or sometimes I will I will tell uh, because that's kind of part of the process, right? right. Where they can feel 100 percent of them are on their side, right. right? What the teenager will do with that. I don't know, you know, but right. sometimes it's just going to happen. So it, just to like parents <laughs> yeah. Yeah. out there, this is just part of the process. We know you're not evil and stuff. It just kind of um, they get to process any negative feelings they have about you sure. with us and our job is to validate it so they, sure. would, they could so they could kind of like grow from that and move on absolutely you know? so absolutely so that's, anyway yeah and so like you bring up a good point that like me in my mind i understand there's always more to the story but oh, yeah. they have to feel understood so i'm probably going to team up with them and how totally. they see the world mm -hmm. but like i know there's more i know that mm -hmm. not i know that they're probably vilifying a parrot and stuff like that and i know that like that's not the case and so mm -hmm. like and like we had this whole discussion about parents and teenagers yeah but, but i'm i'm not thinking that and if i if i think like hey let me meet with the parent i'm not i'm not expecting you to come in for me to beat on you or like yeah. degrade you but i do hope that you're open to the idea that how you're approaching things may not be the most helpful uh -huh. and that there's things that you probably still have to learn and address yeah um but yeah like i'm not yeah like i'm not thinking that yeah parents. i think that was like <laughs> overall good idea to get put out there that yeah it's sort of like part of the process but we do know that there's kind of more to it right it's just not as they're like working through it in a project it's not <clears throat> it wouldn't be helpful for me to say uh-huh, uh-huh. But see, mommy didn't mean that. Like, that's, you know, right. they, they need that time and space to sort of feel like, yeah, my life sucks, you know. Yeah, like, yep. This was so unfair, you know. But then also the teenage brain is up until they're about, like, 13, how their brain's developing, mm -hmm. is that you are their core person. Yeah. Um, but then how the brain develops is it develops its sense of identity or its sense of self. And so it does have to break <laughs> off from that parent mm -hmm. unit. And so your kid of, is supposed to not yeah, like you for a while. <laughs> yeah, and it's okay. Like it's okay if your child doesn't like you for they're a while. They're supposed to That's disagree with you. They have supposed they're supposed to have none none research, not fought through political views yep, <laughs> for a while yep. before they get to vote. You know, yeah, like that's yep. all part of the process. Don't worry. Yeah, Just talking about teenagers again. Right, right. You know, so. There we go. They, they, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I am interested though. Like we were talking about the, we started like with go to like the power dynamics of like the oh, yes. like how I feel like teenage girls play me sometimes <laughs> to try to gain power. Uh -huh. Do you deal with guys that are a little bit more controlling and narcissistic, and you feel like they try to do the same thing, try to get you to say certain things or believe, like team up with them against right. their wife or right? Or, so I'm thinking. Um, Ah, oh, jeez, that's a difficult question. <laughs> um, 
Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna like put away the narcissistic part <laughs> for yeah, yeah, the yeah. moment. It does come up for sure, right? Yeah. But um, overall, power dynamic is kind of interested, and it really is. Uh, yes, men have some stuff in common and some like they're very in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. But like one way or the other, they will sort of, I don't know, you know, like they will try to, a lot of men will try to control the session for sure, right? It's sort of like, this is what we're going to do. And I just, I'm, this is, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about, this is what I need help with. And this is uh -huh. what I do not need help with. Right. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> yeah. uh, <clears throat> so... And I, uh, huh. and they also had like all sorts of experiences with women, right? Right. And I keep in mind, and I'll say it because male therapists said that to me, that as a female therapist, I need to remember that as far as like talking about feelings, some male clients, to not, not to say most, will be at the kindergarten level. Yes. Yes? yes, not because they're, I don't know, not smart enough or like, they haven't done research or anything. No, they just did not have an opportunity to practice that. That was not right. encouraged. Right. So, uh, so I, so I guess I'm in that way gentle with, with male clients. I get to, I think I, I like to let them have some control and don't, I don't, I definitely don't want them to feel attacked and get the defense right, thing because right. that's happened a lot in their life and that's not, you know, right. like, that's kind of their go-to. Maybe sometimes be, even, you know, between other men, they are like sort of like compare, I don't know, incomes and boats and yeah. cars, you know. <laughs> so, so I don't want to, I don't, I kind of, I'm trying to break that pattern. So I do, you know, meet them as where they are, mm -hmm. kind of. And, and I'm trying to, so the way, Hmm. Definitely the way they, they, that I see they sometimes try to get control is that sort of that kind of very general, you know, this is what I'm going to, oh, this is no, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, no. Like, what do you, they ask more questions, right. I think, right? right? What do you think? They want to know, right? Where, right. like, what is, what's happening over there? I need to know, you know? Right. And, and they do ask, male clients ask, I think, ask me more about me. I think that makes them oh, interesting. Yeah, like makes them a little bit uncomfortable that um oh, part of it is I think they're assessing if I know what I'm doing. Okay. So that's I'm okay. as a and that's being a woman, you have right. to prove it. Like you there is, you know, yeah, it doesn't tough. yeah, it doesn't come with just the title, the letters behind you, like even that doesn't right. the, the degree, all that doesn't doesn't get me that so yeah. so they will check if i'm kind of i don't think any female client ever asks me about what degree i have like you know what experience yeah. i have you yeah know? male clients do you know so and um, and then they ask me if i get that from parents i don't really get oh, that yeah. from other yeah. men or women i get yeah. that from parents all the time yeah that kind of makes sense right just because um, of my age yeah, but, sorry. But yeah, that's, that's sorry, not sorry. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That'd be tough if it was like a whole half of a gender that was yeah. constantly questioning. Uh huh. Yeah. So they sort of, um, yeah. So so that those questions, but also, uh, you know, they will ask me if I'm married. They will ask me if I have kids. So they feel like that kind of gives me credibility, I suppose. Yeah. You know, what marriage is like, and right. so so they, I guess, they will do more of that they will be more cautious right yeah. and that kind of comes with that they, they will yeah. sort of like test me they will test me uh, yeah and i kind of i don't know maybe that's wrong but i do let them i not you know like test them to the point i will call them out eventually yeah it's like i hear that you're like struggling with <laughs> 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 i see you know that, yeah uh that's i don't know you know like sometimes and even deeper in a, a therapy relationship uh my client is i think more likely to sort of like whenever we get to actually raw feelings jump out of it with like what do you think or like what do you know or right. the, it's a, sort of like keep it's, to me it feels like I'm about to fall in the hall. I need to know if that the hall is safe and you're going to have me there, yeah, you know? Yeah. Because you're a woman. What do you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, not that, but you know. I um, I can see that with 
like like I've never thought about that aspect of it. Like you sharing that experience, like I've never I've never analyzed mm-hmm. like my experience in that. I think um I do think guys establish credibility more by like the intellect thing. Um where girls establish credibility maybe by like can I be understood? Can I be listened Probably. to? Mm-hmm. Guys are looking more at like status and stuff like that because that's how we're taught. Like, yeah. like, are you like, like the star football player? What's your position? Uh-huh. Like, like military. What's your what's rank. your office? Yeah. What's your rank? Like, um, yeah. Like, I think we're we're taught we have worth based on status, mm-hmm. and girls have worth like based on if they're understood and connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, with female clients, it's sort of like within yeah. the fi- first five minutes, they already tell me, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is totally, the, you know. Yeah. Uh, they don't ever care, be- but, but they feel connected, they feel understood, sure. that I'm easy to talk to, and that's all they For sure. need, pretty much. And male client will not, like at the end of the session, like, okay, I think that could work. I feel like, yeah. you know, uh, but that's not going to be the only component. Yeah. I don't know. That like yeah. that. What well, I'll have to think a lot about that because like I wonder I've if, never like, thought of that. If I wonder if thing. your male clients do that with you, you know, or do it quicker or do it a little less, you know. Teenage boys, I really just have to say oh, what yeah. video games I'm playing, <laughs> and like, like yeah. I have them. Like yeah. they are, they are in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, older ones, I feel like I do have to establish. Credibility, credibility so, yeah. through like what I do, like some of my some of my hobbies and my personal life. I feel like establishes credibility. Okay. Um, something to relate to. Something like to relate very, to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like like ironically, I'm wearing like my Clemson hoodie. That's where I went to school, mm-hmm. and um, like to be frank, like I did not care at all about football until I went to Clemson, and then mm-hmm. because. They were like in the national championships games oh. and like the South is a unreal experience with football. So like me just being like, oh my gosh, like I love college football. Like mm-hmm. I don't, but I do now because <laughs> of Clemson and like going to like at least currently is a pre- prestigious football school. Like that oh, establishes yeah, yeah. Okay. like an odd credibility in a way. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, even if the guy isn't into sports, it's almost like that establishes mm-hmm. like a credibility. But like yeah. now that you're mentioned, like now that you're saying that, I've never noticed that. That like with guys, I'm saying a lot more about um, like my degree, my school, my my education, my ex- mm-hmm. my work experience than I am with female clients. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Right? I don't know. But, like, I don't want to discredit your experience. No, <laughs> like, no like that's, as that's a, a like, woman counselor, yeah, but, like, I've never thought mm-hmm. of that. Hmm. But now that I'm reflecting on it, I think I do do that. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think it may have been, like, more, basically, like, more of a thing with me because... Yeah. Uh, because I don't know anything. I'm a girl. So. Like if it if it was like that they were nailing me down on like classes and stuff like that, <laughs> then I would be probably irritated, yeah, and annoyed, and yeah. then I would maybe notice it. So like that's probably what you're noticing is that like mm-hmm. they probably are stricter with you than me, yeah. Even like even if they stab, even if guys establish credibility the same, like they're vetting you more than they. I think so. Me. Probably, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's good to know that they're vetting you too. Yeah. <laughs> Really, yeah, I never like I didn't think about yeah. it. But maybe c- it. because maybe as a guy you're also used to that. Right. Right? right. Sort of like oh, in that relationship where we're supposed to connect, that's going to be part of this. Yeah. Right? I can have girlfriends and have can have deep conversations with them about and I don't know if they have a degree ever, you know? Like that's right. not even right. I'm not even sure what they do for a living. Right. You know, that's right. not that's something that where somewhere there come comes up. Yeah. Not that this is I mean, it's a still important thing, you know. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah, sorry. Like, I really hope this doesn't come across as like I'm invalidating your experience, but that just made me think about how, um, there's, it, it reminded me of actually like a current situation I'm going through, which I won't say much about the situation. I'll say just like generically that like, um, women almost like dismiss 
my work experience or education、uh-huh. if they don't feel like that's what their friends are saying or it's not necessarily what they want to hear. Not, not,、uh-huh. not necessarily my client, but like if it's a parent of a client or a spouse of a client,、mm-hmm. like I. Like that type of stuff, like they're kind of like, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about because my friend says this.、Oh, and like this happened with、yeah. my friend's relationship and my friend's counselor and stuff like that. Like,、mm-hmm. like women tend to undermine me or at least like,、uh-huh. like undermine my degree, my profession,、uh-huh. my professional experience. Like, if their friends are saying something different. <laughs> well, yeah, the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, but that totally confirms the whole point. See, like,、uh, because I guess as much as men have no experience, well, le- less experience with、right. talking about feelings and relationships and、right. stuff, like, women know that, right? Right. That h a v e been their experience. Like, man, like, how are you going to tell、like, my husband? <laughs>、yeah. You have no idea how、yeah. to, you know, be a partner in a relationship either, right? right? Because right. you're a man, right? right? He, he's, he needs to hear that from an expert, a female, right? So, so、uh, funny, huh? This has been like supervision for me. We've just like recorded <laughs> my supervision. <laughs> I'm going to charge you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. That, that women will question your even like, you know, self awareness、right. and right. stuff. Right. Because right. Because as a man, that's not what you do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like,、hmm. double edged sword, huh?、Big、yeah.、Time. Very double edged sword. Wow.、Yeah. This is very. <laughs> <laughs> very therapeutic for me. I'm so glad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.、Uh, um, yeah. What else do we want to say? You know,、yeah. I, other than like, yes, maybe it's a little bit more complicated. Like, like we've kind of emphasized all our things, like that connection piece is important. Even if it's pushing your buttons, like, like、yeah. stretching yourself as a client or like, we, like, I don't think people realize how stretched we are all the time. <laughs> just like, because we just、yeah. like take whatever、yeah. comes in the door, and at some point it pushes our buttons too.、Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes without us like even realizing it. Obviously, if I'm trying、yes. to process that right now. <laughs> But like, like, lean into the awkwardness, like, be、mm-hmm. willing to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, Always, right? Yeah. Yeah. The awkwardness is where we grow, you know? <laughs> to yeah. Get to the bottom of things. Yeah.、Um, yeah. So I definitely、uh, sort of, I don't know, piggyback on that with、uh, all the clients. And that's a th- do that. And with, f- with male clients, I do, like, if I feel like that is playing a role and hasn't come up yet, I will notice that, right? Like, right. okay, like, I know I'm a girl. Like, think about it. If, Sometimes at the beginning, when、uh, especially younger clients, when they're like in the, with pornography issues,、yep. I, te- I will tell them, like, you know, I'm a girl. So if you ever feel like you want to say something and you would to a male or, you know, a guy, right, right. just tell me that, okay? That there's、yeah. something, but you're not comfortable saying that to a girl. Right. Yet. Right. <laughs> right. Right. You know, because you're right. I think it is. Important, especially about the intimate stuff, and a lot of、uh, guys did not have good experience yet. There's also, like, while we're talking about this, men have it hard. I know we、yeah. always hear, like, I don't want to like sound like anti feminist or anything.、Yeah. I'm, I'm actually, in therapeutic sense, I am a feminist. I do、yeah. like to stand up for anyone that it has, have, has it harder. Right. In some aspect, right. right? Right. So there's lots of expectations, lots of pressures on men. Like all this, like, oh, like even with, so we talk about、uh, pornography, sex addictions, even with, with sex, like they're supposed to always want it. And right. So right. that's ridiculous, you know? Or the pressure to always initiate it. Yes, like, exactly. We have、oh, to、gosh. read signs. We have to know exactly if they want to hold their head or cuddle <laughs> or kiss or whatever. It's ri- crazy. It's ridiculous. So,、yep. so, by the time they do make it to my office, they had they had have really like a bunch of bad experiences, right? Whether they were judged to not be sexual enough or too sexual、yep. or be pervert or like be somehow less of a man because they won't want sex all the time. Like,、yep. All、yep. that stuff. So, so they already have been kind of, you know. Right. Um, put down. I don't know what, what I was going to with that, but it was very important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That and and in the meantime, they didn't, they did not have this before the whole sex thing came up. 
they were not trained to talk about leash. They were not ever right. like, you hurt my feelings. Right. Girls get to say it. Boys really, no, they get right. to punch each other or something, right. you know? Right. Get the, you know, steal a toy yeah. or something, you know? So, um, so I think it is, imp- first of all, it's important for them to, to come to therapy, heal from that. For sure. And learn, yep. right? And yep. I do like to say, I like that you said that. I like to think that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Having, because some of that damaging experiences have come from a female, from females, For right? Sure. From For girls sure. making fun of someone that they're not fast enough or strong enough on a right. playground, right? Right. I'm sorry, but girls do that too, you know? Right. So, uh, so yeah, so then from... Go ahead. No, keep going. Keep going. Sorry. Sorry. Personal Zach is having a lot of thoughts, but Personal Zach also does not want to talk right now. And I will respect that. <laughs> so, anyway, so I feel like that's. Uh, uh, so, with male clients, more than with anything, just like with teenager, I think I'm very protective of the relationship. I will be their, you know, their kind of safe person first. Right. Before we go, they before they will ever consider telling me about right. how hurt they were and how mistreated they've been and all that stuff, you know. Right. Um. Yeah. So, oh, I know where I was going with that. <laughs> so, at the end of the day, I get to be. They get to have an experience with a female that will not shame them right. and will not like right. um, shame them in any way for anything, really. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that's a super valuable experience. If if guys are willing to embrace that, that's a super valuable experience. Granted, yeah. not every female therapist is willing to do that, um, but True. like, but like, yeah, like, yeah. go for it. It's not like just <laughs> FYI. It's not like I talk about porn all day, okay? Right, right. Because there's like <laughs> there's so much more to sex addiction, porn addiction than yeah. just the it's porn an addiction, or just the sex. right? And it's under any addiction, there is. There's trauma, there's emotions, there's relationships, there's boundaries, there's... Yeah, yeah, um, the addiction is usually just a symptom. Thought processes, like, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, like, even yeah. me, I rarely talk about actual pornography or actual sex when I'm talking right. about that stuff. Yeah, so that's good to kind of remember that this sort of, like, to me, I t- kind of, like, treat it as a symptom right. when we um, talk about it. So whether it's sex, porn, video games, or alcohol, or drugs, Absolutely. it kind of comes down to... Yep. Some of things, right? Yep. Okay. All right. We better wrap this up before personal Zach starts sharing. Okay. <laughs> so, well, 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 it's going to yeah. be an interesting drive home for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have right. to process through a lot. <laughs> you go for it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody who listened or not, uh, for being with us. Please do this. This is a big topic. So please do um, comment wherever we will post it. Uh, just leave us comments. We will definitely go through them and see if we need like a part two to this. Yeah. Yes? Be kind to us. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>